Dear participants, greetings to all of you. I am going to give you a course on inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry uh, that is known as ICP AES for pollution control and um, it is also known as uh, ICP OES inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectrometry but more importantly it is known as ICP AES and um, regarding the this course I would like to show you one more slide that is uh, um, it is basically a template uh, in which I introduce you to the actual course uh, regarding the plan of teaching. Actually, I could have shown you at the end of my plan was to show it to you at the end of the um, presentation, but I think it is a right time to introduce you to it now, it does not matter. So, this is course is uh, uh, known as um, inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry. The intended audience are chemists, chemical engineers, environmental engineers, environmental scientists, civil engineers and pollution control administrators. You can see that the intended audience covers a number of uh, professionals using dif um, belonging to different disciplines. And um, regarding more about the course, I would like to say it is sort of uh, elective course. You can choose to write an examination in this uh, if you fe feel like. Otherwise, you can audit the course because the course is so important that it is more important to learn about the subject than uh, uh, wrote, uh, wrote it by um, studying it and then passing an examination. Of course, it does not mean that it is not meant for students. It is meant for students of MSc. Um, chemistry in almost all universities. It is also meant for students of uh, chemical engineering and other other uh, disciplines which I have enumerated earlier. Now, lot of people ask me is it a PG course or UG course? I would say it is a PG course, but the uh, conditions in our country are so fluid that within the next 10 years I expect it to be taught in undergraduate course also. Okay. So, that brings me to the fourth column which degree would it apply to? I would say it is applicable to MSc, MTech, MS in engineering, ME in engineering and BE in engineering. By engineering I mean chemical engineering, environmental engineering, civil engineering and pollution control, environmental pollution control. Now, what are the pre prerequisites? I want to make it very simple for you. It is basically an understanding of the concept and practice that I want to teach you more than the theoretical aspects. So, I would say 10 plus 2 plus 3 years of uh, BSc or BE should be good enough to have the um, complete understanding of the subjects which I am going to introduce you now. If you learn this subject, where you expect to use it? The uh, application areas are chemical industries and pollution control. So, uh, in addition to the administration and other uh, civil engineers etcetera, etcetera, the it is going to be a big asset for almost all of you to learn about the uh, inductive coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry. It is an analytical chemistry, it is an instrumentation, it is also a way of determining the metal atoms in the environment that is what we are going to emphasize. Now, the time frame uh, I am planning to give this course in January to June 2018. You can ask your friends 
to come and join if you like the uh, this introductory lecture and then it is also uh, final will there be a certification the answer is yes there will be a certification if you wish to choose for certification and take an examination the examination will be online with multiple choice questions if you wish to choose it now what are the weightage of assignments the assignment works out to around 25 and examination will be about 75 percent that means the total um, score what you would like to uh, what you would be attempting is whatever you learn during the course is about 25 percent and uh, in the final examination it will be 75 percent. Uh, so, the uh, course title for your uh, confirmation once again it is inductive coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry for pollution control uh, pollution monitoring and discipline basic discipline is chemical engineering, but it is also for chemists. Number of hours what I want to teach you in this uh, program is approximately 10 hours that is about 20 hour 20 sessions of half an hour each. And uh, let me tell you that it is a very very useful course for almost all postgraduate students of uh, uh, universities as well as technical universities. Now, uh, the instructors of the course I am uh, Dr. Mudakavi J R Mudakavi I am from chemical engineering department Indian Institute of Science my, uh, my email address is here mudakavijr at gmail dot com I have I am providing you my mobile number and I am your website uh, instructor also. Then I have two TAs one is Dr. K Putana and who is assisting me in the preparation of uh, slides and other information and another is Chaitra who is my administrator. So, um, Dr. Putana is a PhD in chemistry from and worked in CSIR laboratory at uh, Bangalore and then Dr. K Putana his email address and mobile number contact numbers are all here. So, for any reason if you wish to contact us please do not hesitate to contact us for all the um, uh, difficulties if you have or if you have doubts be free feel free to contact me or my assistants we will be extremely happy to assist you not only during the course, but also post course I will still be my students and I will do whatever I can to help you later. Now, what is the course program? the course program is like this that introduction in the week number 1 first week there are I have divided it into 5 modules and first module is about introduction to the pollution control monitoring followed by the, there will be about 1 or 2 sessions followed by I want you to learn about atomic structure because any spectroscopic technique is based on the atomic structure and uh, transitions taking place at the electronic or nuclear levels these are uh, designated as M 2 module number 2 there are about 3 or uh, 5 lectures in that followed by uh, the spectroscopic uh, aspects that is interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter that is uh, regarding the optics and uh, other uh, related aspects of uh, inductive coupled plasma atomic emission and these are um, fairly exhaustive um, about uh, 6 sessions ok followed by 7 sessions uh, followed by we uh, by an intensive um, information uh, program about the ICP AES that is the core of the material that will be about uh, 4 units followed by application of ICP AES to chemical analysis or the determination of the metal ions. Now, why I would like to uh, teach this because it is a course for you to learn about the determination of the metal ions at parts per million parts per billion 
and parts per trillion levels and this is a special course designed for you. Now, uh, you would uh, if you are taking this course you, at the end of each week I am going to give you some sort of assignment that is uh, after about uh, 5 hours there will be an assignment as per the program of the uh, this MOOC or NPTEL whatever it is there will be about 3 or 4 assignments followed by an examination. Now, uh, I will leave it to your uh, uh, wisdom to audit the course or to take the course for examination. You can also tell your friends to study about this. I have also taught similar courses for spectrophotometry and atomic absorption. Uh, they are also available in the um, MOOC or NPTEL programs. You can look up the available programs in that and you can take up those courses. Now, this is my third uh, course in this uh, program. This is inductive coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry. Now, uh, what I would like to do is now is um, I would like you to go through this uh, slide followed by my plan of teaching. I have already given you a glimpse of uh, what I am uh, going to teach you and that is the first part is about introduction, second part is about the atomic structure and third part is uh, interaction of radiation with matter, fourth part is theory of inductively coupled plasma spectrometry, fourth is instrumentation followed by applications. Now, this is module 1, I am going to talk to you about the introduction. Um, application of uh, science and technology. Application of science and technology is all about an ongoing process for improving the quality of life on earth. It is an evolutionary ongoing process. Since last 50 years, the pace of adoption of science and technology has been increasing at a breakneck speed in especially in recent years. Now, why I would say this? Because what I am trying to teach you today may become obsolete within the next 3 years or 4 years or 5 years. We may have a different technology. So, that is why what we are saying is we have to be adaptive to changes and advances. Therefore, the adoption of science and technology for human comforts is very well known. It is uh, available um, for food, green revolution, milk revolution and so many other uh, um, revolutions for the production of food materials etcetera you must have heard of and then it is available for clothing, that is the new technologies available for uh, the preparation of synthetic materials in addition to natural materials like wood, bamboo, cloth, uh, cotton etcetera, terrain, terracotta almost of the things and housing there are lot of advances, medicine, travel, entertainment uh, list is endless. It is a very very visible process. However, the same advances can also be used to solve myriad problems confronting our humanity. Such examples include poverty elimination and then diseases control, pollution control and several other problems which are we, which we are facing at different levels of uh, uh, the current life on our planet. Now, among these fundamental sciences are there such as physics, chemistry, mathematics such things and uh, among the uh, among these I am sure you will agree with me that chemistry is the is one of the most fundamental science and advances in chemistry are always supported 
by advances in physics and mathematics. It is the chemistry that drives the development of physics and uh, mathematics also quite a lot because chemistry is for us to understand adopt it and then application and theory interpretation and all other things will come later. Now, I also wanted um, you to understand the root of chemistry as we understand today is in the structure of the atoms. You know it is about the elements all around us wherever we look at where whatever we are dealing with whatever we are breathing in whatever we are um, the using it is all about atoms molecules and chemicals. So, we are able since um, atomic and molecular structure is a very big part of the chemistry and we have made rapid strides in the last century about regarding the understanding of the atomic and molecular structure. Currently, we are able to understand the atomic and molecular structure of the elements and compounds in terms of electronic and nuclear structure when they undergo chemical reactions. So, among the chemistry we are talking about spectroscopy. Why? Because atomic and molecular spectroscopy is a science which is an offshoot of the structural changes occurring in the atoms and molecules. At what level? They occur at electronic level electrons or nuclear transitions. So, over the years spectroscopy has become the backbone of our chemical analysis all because of the rapid advances in instrumentation, electronics, computing technology and presentation CRT etcetera etcetera. But the basic driving force is the spectroscopy. Over the years spectroscopy has grown into a very powerful tool for the identification and quantification of chemical compounds. Anything you wish to do, do a chemical analysis, you will ask only two questions. One is what it is and second is how much it is. So, the goal of all chemical analysis is how much it is and what it is. Okay. Sometimes we are also interested in uh, expanding the question of what it is by adding what else it contains. Again the answer to all these three questions comes only from the chemical analysis and a large chunk of it comes from chemical spectroscopy. So, the uh, progress in atomic uh, uh, spectroscopy can also be used to follow the progress of chemical reactions that is one of the advantages as well as one of the important aspects what we wish to cover now. Now, environmental pollution we have to relate how do we relate a chemical uh, process to an environmental process. The idea is we have to understand apart from chemical spectroscopy, spectroscopic techniques, how do we correlate it to the pollution control, environmental pollution control. The idea is we determine the chemicals which affect the environment. Now, what is environmental pollution? we define it as the temporary or permanent changes occurring in our surroundings such as air, water and land which affect the quality of human life temporarily or permanently. 
it may be as chemicals by themselves or in combination with other chemicals and bacterial or biological mediators such as virus, bacteria and several other the, uh, and plant and animal life which will interact with the chemicals to alter the fate of the chemicals. Since last 60 years, environmental pollution has been posing a major threat to the survival of living organisms including man, plants and animals of our planet. Now, technically what do you say or when do you say an environmental pollution is occurring? Now, you can say that uh, the environmental pollution is thought to originate from dust, chemicals and their interactions with microbiological species such as bacteria, viruses, algae, uh, fungi and so many other uh, um, the plant and insect uh, products and but it is localized in the pollution that is more dangerous or more visible. Environmental pollution may occur all over the world, it may occur a particular region, it may occur in the air, in the sky like our ozone hole affecting the whole earth, but whatever happens at the ground level it is the localized pollution that is that catches the eye. Now, this localized pollution is basically of about uh, four kinds, one is variation of BOD and COD in water bodies by the chemicals and petrochemicals. I hope you all understand what is BOD and COD. BOD is the biochemical oxygen de demand and COD is the chemical oxygen demand. That means, most of the chemicals present in, our, in the environment use up the available oxygen in presence of bacteria or without bacteria also the dissolved oxygen to get oxidized to harmless compounds such as carbon dioxide and water. Now, there may be another uh, localized pollution which most of us know are atmospheric emissions that is the emissions of carbon monoxide, sulphur dioxide, nitrogen oxides and many other gases etcetera which emanate from the human activities or from natural sources also whenever it is human activities we will normally attribute it to vehicular pollution. Sometimes uh, the burning of uh, organic produce in the open air which uh, we are seeing nowadays almost all over India including Delhi that happened in the recent cricket uh, match which with lot of ramifications that is particulate matter that is defined as PM 10 or PM 2.5 that is particulate matter of 10 and 2.5 microns that end up in the air which we keep on breathing with deleterious effects on our health. And the third type of uh, is about decomposition of organic matter in air, water and land. This also most of you are, must are familiar uh, with this type of environmental localized pollution because whenever something is rotting it is all our experience to close our nose and uh, walk around and then if something is rotting in water we cannot eat, uh, eat it or uh, we cannot drink it. If it is something rotting on the land the produce from the land is becomes not usable at all. Now there is another kind of uh, pollution localized pollution that is the irretrievable loss of metals and metal ions and their distribution in the environment. Now, this last one that is irretrievable loss of metal ions and their distribution is another one which is not so visible like all the other three which I have described earlier. 
because sometimes the effects are immediately visible, but most of the time if it is metal ions in the environment, we are not really affected in a visible fashion. It does not mean that it is no it is a less dangerous also, no not at all. Suppose you must have taken breakfast today, if you have taken breakfast you might have taken idli and sambar, the sambar what you eat along with idli contains salt, if it contains the salt in a, in a decent fashion in within a, uh, acceptable limits you will enjoy idli and sambar, but if the salt is double you may not enjoy it, if it is 3 times you will not enjoy it, but if it is 5 times definitely if you are forced to eat it you will discard it, it is toxic, it will cause reaction in your stomach, but if it is some other metal ion apart from salt which is not visible, which is not taste, which does not carry any specific taste. Suppose the concentration is more than 5 times or more than 3 times, you will not feel the difference, but it will cause the damage to the same extent. I hope you are able to understand why we are talking about metal ions in particular and um, what type of pollution it is uh, causing. Now, this has got direct relationship with the technique what we are going to study that is inductive coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry. Now, while it is true that pollution causes a variety of maladies, it is also possible to at least partially remedy the situation by physically and chemically removing the offending chemicals, is not it? It is a very simple process. Now, <coughs> animals for example, if they are exposed to a localized pollution polluted area, they can move away to in search of greener pastures which are not polluted, but man is not programmed to move away. If you are a software engineer, if you are in Bangalore, you have to work in Bangalore or whether it air is polluted or not you live there. So, unlike animals localized pollution cannot be a sustainable solution for human beings, if not for, uh, but it can be a sustainable solution for animals, because they do not have the roots on the land. Now, the sometimes it is possible for us to remove the cause of the pollutant pollution by removing the chemicals from the from mixing in the environment. Sometimes we move away, sometimes we treat the waste water to get good water, sometimes we treat the waste itself into compost or something like that, that is also another way of accepting. So, we can alter the chemical composition of the environmental pollutants by different techniques. Therefore, the procedure for environmental pollution control, what does it involve? It involves number one identification and determination of the pollutants and the extent of pollution that is quantitation. Number two, once you identify the next step is technical intervention. This technical intervention is within our hands, it is within our capabilities. That is what I have been explaining to you, that is you remove the offending chemical, you can compost it and many other, uh, you can treat the water, land etcetera. Uh, there is another thing known as uh, remediation for land, soil etcetera, that can be done. And then what is the third way? So, environmental pollution control involves post intervention evaluation. Now, this is a very important aspect of uh, environmental pollution control that is if you do something 
to remedy the situation occurring due to pollution control uh, action from your side, you would also like to know what would be the end result by re-evaluating that is post in, uh, intervention evaluation. Fortunately, it is possible to employ atomic and molecular spectroscopy to quanti qualitatively and quantitatively determine the pollutants in any given matrix fortunately. Nowadays, we are able to understand our uh, um, uh, our advances in the chemical analysis our analytical sciences have reached such a level that it is possible for us to quickly analyze the cause of the pollution. The advantages of spectroscopic methods include one is they are simple, fast, reliable and cost effective solutions for pollution monitoring. Okay?